Welcome to Insights for Health with Dr. Ree. As more of us live longer and longer and live close to the age of 100 years, uh, we're called centenarians. And centenarians, um, we actually have to worry about the following issues. There are about seven things that I actually itemized, and these are the, uh, some of the most common issues that we need to deal with. Uh, first, it's dementia. Second, depression. Third, cancer. Fourth, heart disease. Fifth, hypertension. Sixth, diabetes. Seventh, poverty. Poverty is not a disease, but it's definitely an issue that we need to plan for or uh, think about so we can prevent it. Now, we actually also have a bucket list, uh, something that we want to do before we die. But uh, bucket list is actually a uh, gloomy term because it comes from the expression, he kicked the bucket, uh, meaning somebody being hanged or somebody committing suicide. So instead of a bucket list, no matter how beautifully it can be um, represented as the picture shows here, I'd rather have us use the term dream list uh, because it's something that's more, um, more bright and something that we can um, picture in our mind. And now, what is something or one disease that actually affects our dream more than anything else? It's some of our uh, chronic diseases. And biggest, one of the most dreaded diseases is cancer. So what if you're diagnosed with cancer today? What if I am diagnosed with cancer today? What are some of the things that go through our mind? Okay, first, um, are cancer genetic? Uh, so true and false question is um, the first question that I have here. Most cancers are genetic. Um, try to guess the right answer. Number two, uh, genetic structure can be changed with diet. Number three, you need to eat raw vegetables to kill cancer cells. Four, fasting can cure cancer. Five, sleep detoxifies your body. Six, exercise repairs your DNA. Seven, mindfulness will cause aging of your brain. So of these seven questions, which ones have you answered true? Only one that is true is exercise repairs your DNA. All of them, all of the other ones are false. And in my lecture and subsequent lectures, I will actually give answers to these questions. Um, National Institute of Health actually reported this um, following study some, uh, some time ago. And this is actually contribution of various risk factors to cancer. Now, if the cancers were genetic, um, as you can see on the bottom, there would be more contribution than 5 to 10%, but it only says genes represent only 5 to 10% of cancer. Next one is environmental factors, 25%. And the one that's a little higher is lifestyle other than diet, 30%. And obesity and diet actually contribute to about 35% of cancer. So. Uh, your diet is very, very important. So I'm going to talk to you about a very, very interesting research that actually had to do with agouti mice. And agouti um, is actually color of the fur and is actually kind of a brownish color. But these uh, rats that are genetically uh, destined to suffer, as I actually um, put here, uh, their fur color um, is pretty much orange and they're obese, and they actually have diabetes and cancer if nothing else happens. But you can do something about these uh, mice, and if something in their lifestyle changes, their appearance and their health outcome, outcome can change as well. So the researchers that actually did something very, very interesting, and that is uh, gonna come up in a minute, but if you look right here, what actually happens to the, the moms of these rats actually affected the outcome of health of these um, mice. I said rats, right? It's actually mice. And so if you actually look at this, um, the mom of this mouse actually did not have any lifestyle change. A mom of this mouse actually had a significant lifestyle change. And what happened uh, to, the, uh, to the mouse 
whose mom actually changed the lifestyle is actually following. So three days before mating, uh, the mom was actually, mom mouse was fed beet, onion, and garlic. And the uh, health outcome of her offspring was actually changed. So the destiny was able to be changed. Actually, this can actually happen in human beings, um, not as frequently uh, across the generation, but in your every single day life, your uh, genes, uh, the genes that can cause cancer, genes that can cause obesity, can be suppressed. And this field is called epigenetics, and this is how it works. If you look at this picture, we have uh, DNA, like a thread, it's uh, unwrapped like a thread, and DNA uh, is actually wrapped around the histone in this part, and so when the uh, DNA is actually unwrapped and open, then the gene that's actually in this DNA can be expressed. So if there's a cancer, cancer gene in this uh, thread of DNA, then cancer can be expressed. But there's this thing called a methyl group, and it looks kind of like popcorn um, in this picture, but actually methyl group has to do with like CH3. And when CH3, a specific chemical uh, donated by the beet or onion and garlic, uh, it actually attaches to the, when the methyl group attaches to the DNA, the DNA actually gets wrapped around the school. Uh, it's called histone in scientific term. Then a DNA becomes dormant. DNA becomes suppressed. So you're, even though you may have the genes to express cancer, uh, your genes can be silenced or dormant. And so you do not express these genes, then you may not have this disease, whether it's obesity, diabetes, or cancer. Isn't that a good news? So, um, but if you go back to uh, meat eating uh, for various reasons, um, there's benzopyrene in this um, burnt uh, meat, uh, there's uh, fried oil, so fried oil is uh, a, um, a cancer-linked uh, toxin, and there are saturated fats, so that actually is linked with uh, increased ca uh, cholesterol high uh, calorie that is also linked with obesity. So there's a lot of things that go on with um, uh, meat eating. And so if you actually go on meat eating, then you can actually uh, start to unwind or unwrap the DNA from the spool. And the gene, if it's a cancer gene or obesity gene, uh, then those genes can be expressed. And uh, it's not as pervasive as one's thought, but this could still happen. So if you look at this, um, if you live a poor lifestyle or make choices that can unwrap the DNA uh, from the spool, which is uh, scientifically called histone, then cancer DNA thread uh, is unwound or unwrapped and cancer gene is expressed. And that's how you can actually develop cancer. Uh, so cancer cells accumulate in your cells, and, and, and you know, when millions of cancer cells accumulate and clump together, then um, the clump or the mass is big enough to be detected by imaging studies such as CT or an MRI. And so that's how we, uh, cancer, cancer develops and cancer becomes big enough to become diagnosed. But if you actually eat a very um, anti-cancer uh, gene, uh, lifestyle, so including beets in your life or garlic or onion, you can actually reverse uh, some of the uh, uh, cancer genes that have become expressed. So there's a lot of different ways to eat uh, beets. Uh, you can actually cook beets and you still have a lot of the cancer benefits. Um, so this is called destiny changing beet, right? Because beet actually is um, something that uh, donates methyl group, and methyl group, as you actually saw, suppresses the cancer gene, and it has been studied that colon cancer can be suppressed by uh, eating beets, uh, by a beet actually donating the methyl group. Uh, folic acid is also donated by beet, and it rejuvenates cells, it makes the cells younger. And beets also have beta cyanin that kill many cancer cells. Vitamin A, C, and magnesium, calcium, and iron can be 
uh, supplement it by eating, eating beet. And beets also have blood thinning effects, so it can prevent clots in your blood and uh, cleanses the uh, liver, gallbladder, as well as colon, so it's actually a great thing. And finally, uh, beet actually has uh, a good amount of glucose, uh, but it's wrapped inside the root and it's not pure sugar, so it doesn't raise your sugar as much as eating sugar cane, uh, but it actually gives you the boost of energy. So if you add uh, some olive oil or some lemon to uh, your beet, your cooked beet, then you can also uh, prevent the sugar in your blood from rising uh, too much. Uh, but if you're a diabetic, you need to kind of watch out for how much sugar uh, is actually going up in your, uh, in, your, in your blood once you eat some beet. And also when you go to the bathroom, make sure you remember that uh, the beet color is going to show, show up in your toilet bowl, so don't be surprised, you're not bleeding. Um, and along with beets, if you actually add arugula and other berries, you can actually have uh, additional cancer benefits. So beet, berries, arugula, onions, and garlic um, should be part of your lifestyle. Uh, because all of us actually uh, develop cancer cells every single day of our life. And before the cancer cells clump together and form masses, uh, we can actually kind of uh, obliterate these cancer cells with just eating a proper diet that actually fight cancer cells. So once again, uh, the brain choices that we make actually affect our, uh, some of our gene expression. And so this is actually a great news and I would like to challenge you to actually reverse some of the things that happen uh, in your body by eating the food that actually has anti-cancer properties. And so once again, remember that your cancer genes or diabetic genes or obesity genes may be able to be wrapped up so that they're not expressed if you have those genes. Uh, I have a professor um, that I uh, think dearly of, and um, the, here's a picture of the professor and his wife. And about 30 years ago, I was sitting in his class uh, learning microbiology. Now he came to me because he was seeking um, a doctor who actually had a good understanding of lifestyle and epigenetic changes based on the lifestyle. And he and I actually have a very good time in discussing about how we can improve uh, the health of our community and um, you know have a exciting news about how we can reverse some of the genetic destiny um, by changing our diet and so this is something that uh, I would like to continue to talk to you about and in the next uh, lecture I'm going to talk to you more in detail about more foods more functional foods that can suppress cancer cells so stay tuned uh, for the next video next lecture on specific cancers and specific foods, functional foods that suppress cancer cells.